people wait for Christmas, wait for Diwali to say, this is strange. Such a big celebration is in, pro is in progress everywhere all around. Cut those trees. You know, they're celebrating in the wind. Dancing. Whole universe is dancing. And it is a scientific fact, you know. Uh, scientists, perhaps not mainstream scientists, especially those who uh, are the proponents of uh, quantum mechanics, they have realized, they have, I should say discovered that at the, at the most fundamental level, a great dance, a cosmic dance in, is in process. The, the, the dance of creation, preservation, and, and elimination particles are born, they exist, they exist to maintain uh, reality as we know it, and then they, they disappear. And it, it is something that happens in a harmony. And the dance on a music, well, this is Hamoud discovered, I have discovered it, mystics, uh, in the past, I've discovered it. I call it the ohm. Ohm is vibrating. It's like uh, they say Vishnu is playing on the his divine instrument. Vishnu has an instrument called saranga. Hmm? Saranga. And it is said that Shiva and Mother of the universe, Mother Parvati, is dancing. What a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's why, you know, even I'm sitting silently, in my case, when I'm, I'm doing nothing, when I'm speaking with you here now, for me, it is vibrating my nerves, my everything's inside, astral and vibrating, dancing. But it's true also sometimes, I go even beyond the dance, then it is absolute samadhi, deep samadhi, no dance, nothing, just witnessing, just consciousness. And my prayer and blessing, you experience same as me. So I was saying, you know, life has become a habit. All the religious festival, uh, life, everything, even birth and death, you might uh, find it difficult to, to believe that even birth and death has become a habit. You are born again and again, you die again and again, you're born again and unconscious. When it is unconscious, it is a habit. So even birth and death is a habit and one, what takes place between birth and death is equally a habit. This is the great delusion. This is a great maya. You have to get out of this soon. Unless you want to enjoy this habit, but when you have habit, when you're unconscious, you don't enjoy. You think you're enjoying. You dream of enjoying. You don't enjoy it really. You have to get out of this habit soon. Hmm? So that's it. This is a small sharing of my uh, experiences with you. A small tips for your mind, for your meditation, about mind for your meditation. Most seekers, disciples, and even devotees, I, 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 I read it in books. Even the so called Swamis, you know, when some enlightened people talk about mind control. Now, this is very funny. You cannot control mind because mind is a shadow. It is not possible to control mind. Mind is like a ghost, worse than a ghost. A ghost is at least something that can exist. It exists, it has an existence. But shadows, reflections, is just an absence. Just imagine you're by a lake, walking, strolling, or in a park, and you see beautiful plant, beautiful tree, very vast, very big, very, very small. You know, and you, you see the beautiful shade of the tree, the reflection, which means in that place, light is not coming. The tree is obstructing the light. Now, the tree is you know, dancing and the wind is moving here and there. Now I tell you to stop the dancing of the tree by touching the shadow. Try to cut the shadow. Wouldn't you think of me about eh, a crazy guy? 
See, he has gone cuckoo. What is happening to Guruji? <laughs> well, this is what you are doing, people. Most you are doing. That's why you fail. That's why you don't attain enlightenment. If you want to eliminate the shadow, to stop the shadow, you have to cut the tree or you have to prune the branches. So never make this mistake of trying to control thoughts. At most, you can be a witness of it. And when, when you are a witness, you realize that you are not your thoughts. This is extremely important. You are not your thoughts. Even your mood, when I, my thoughts, for me, it's mine. Mine means mood, attitude, and all these, all these are thoughts. Huh? All these are false. So that's why many great mystics have laid an emphasis on witnessing, on watching. This is true meditation. Techniques are meant to enhance your witnessing capacity. I wanted to share this with you. Yesterday I was speaking to a few disciples. And I realized I have to share this with you. Perhaps in the, in the past, I've already spoken about it, but you've forgotten it. So never speak about mind control. Hmm? Always think in terms of watching the mind, of understanding mind. Mind is a shadow. It is a shadow of uh, fragmented consciousness. Even fragmented consciousness, fragmented consciousness is an illusion. Even that is a shadow. If you can watch it, then you will realize yourself as pure consciousness. So don't, that's why it will be pointless. It will be useless. It will be a waste of time and energy trying to control the mind. Hmm? Many people have made this mistake. They could have attained enlightenment in just a few births. They have to take many births because of this foolishness. Understand your mind, thinking and all things, they are a shadow of uh, unconsciousness, of fragmented consciousness, of individual consciousness. This you have to make this a great meditation. Go very deep in. in your true nature, you're always witnessing consciousness, pure consciousness. When you when you establish it, then you you become a celebration yourself. You don't celebrate, you are a celebration. I would like you to meditate on this. Take a breath. Don't fight with yourself. Otherwise, you will get tired. You will get, go crazy. You will waste much energy and then you will be frustrated. Invest all your time, as much time as possible, as much energy as possible in trying to become more alert, more and whatever makes you less alert, less aware, shun it. Hmm? Renounce it. Keep yourself away from it, whatever it is. Hmm? And very unfortunately, when the, in, in the world, you get carried away and uh, witnessing becomes difficult. Hmm? So be very careful about, do not fight yourself. Please. Watch, relax. Don't get identified. So let's uh, continue with uh, the angelic Buddha. You no, know, Buddha was like an angel. Buddha, he was otherworldly, like an angel. Jesus Christ was a bit more human. He would go with his disciple walk with prostitutes, sit down with people, ordinary people, you know, eat and drink. And he, he isn't, he's even reproached for that. He would love eat, drink, drink wine, eat fish, eat grilled lamb, <laughs> you know? At that time, I don't know whether we had lamb curry. So he would crack jokes. Jesus Christ was, uh, in, in, in French quality, bon vivant. He liked to eat, drink. He enjoyed it. He celebrated it. It's not that Jesus that you see hanging on the cross as if he's in a very difficult situation and calling for help. This is, I don't like this image. And in other images, he was bliss incarnate. He was celebration incarnate. He was God incarnate. 
So we'll just imagine. Mm -hmm. ah. So that's it. Yes, Buddha, but in, in contrast, Buddha was very, I won't say serious, you know, serious. Either you, you, you are serious uh, or you are happy, you are smiling. But when you are in a state of deep silence and awareness, automatically you look mysterious. You look mysterious. And this is what happened. And Buddha was beautiful. He was a Kshatriya. He was fair skin. He had stout body, you know. He was a prince on top of all that. And one day he was walking. Uh, people were so attracted uh, towards him. They say, who are you? Are you a god? Are you an angel? Who are you? Are you a devta? You no. Know, are you a gandhar? <laughs> who are you? He said, no, I'm none of these. I'm Buddha. <laughs> now no, he's not giving his name. He's not saying that I'm called Buddha. Just I will say I'm called Buddha. I come, I call Buddha. I call Buddha. I call no. He said, I'm Buddha. He said, I'm aware. I'm awakened. <laughs> now, this is a very strange name. He's not saying I have awakened. He's, he's saying, I am, or I should say, he said, I'm awakening. So he's saying I'm a state of being. And he's not even saying that I'm a state of being. He's simply pronouncing that word. A state of being. I'm, I'm awakening. Now, this was the Buddha. And Buddha was, when it comes to discipline, Buddha was very disciplined, you know. So he was not in the world. He was not celebrating the world in the sense that we celebrate, you know, we go to the seaside, we eat good food, we crack jokes, you know, among ourselves, we celebrate Christmas and eat and so on and so on. Buddha, no. You wake up in the morning, very soft, very like in slow motion, fully alert, fully aware. He will do his uh, morning business and then go for discourse. After discourse, he take his Meal, wash his bowl, no, rest, rest in Samadhi, sleep or Samadhi. Then in the evening, he wakes up. This is how he's like, the Buddha. But in comparison, Krishna was a dancer. <laughs> Krishna was the lover boy. <laughs> he was a supreme enjoyer. For him, life, there's nothing to celebrate. I mean, there's nothing to reject in life, just my, myself. There's nothing to reject in life. But, well, even Krishna and Rama was of the beyond. They're not supposed to have existed, as Osho said. And he rightly says, they did exist. But they were too divine. Buddha was too angelic. But Jesus was human. Osho was human. No, I am human. And uh, Gujev was very much human. <laughs> he was a bit rude. <laughs> yes. So let's continue. Let's continue our adventure with Gautam Buddha. Hmm? With Gautam Buddha. Said he, he speak or act with an impure mind, and trouble will follow you as a will follows the ox that draws a cart. Now, what is a pure mind before we, we speak about, uh, uh, come to the word? It, an impure mind. What is a pure mind? A pure mind is a meditative mind. A pure mind is a state of no thinking. A pure mind is a state of mind which is alert. A consciousness which is expanded, which is expansive. This is a pure mind. Pure mind means pure consciousness. Now, what is in pure mind, it is a mind which is unconscious. It is a mind with an eye. It is unconsciousness, it is ego. And when you have ego and unconsciousness, then you are born again and again. When you are born again and again, why you are born again and again? Because of desire. And desires are always impure. You know? You have greed, born from desires, 
then you have lust, you have hatred, you have anger, you have jealousy, you have attachment, you have hypocrisy. All these are impurities of the mind. But the main impure things is the mind and all the things that I've just mentioned are the shadow of the mind. So an impure mind itself is impure. So for a mystic, when you talk of impurity, you are talking about mind. Because mind is cut off from the whole. As soon as you're cut off from the whole, desire is born. And because you're unconscious, what makes you unconscious? All the impressions that you've carried from birth to birth, all these animal impressions, all your anger in the form of impressions, all your greed, all your hatred, all your jealousy, all your, all your impressions of revenge, you know, all your impressions of hypocrisy. This is what mind is, because when mind becomes impure, unconsciousness dissolve away. Unconsciousness dissolve away. When unconsciousness dissolve away, you realize your oneness with life, with existence. Your tiny eye gives place to the supreme eye. As soon as you place your eyes, your eye first, your eyes and plural, then you are cut off from your creator. You are cut off from the over self, from the higher self. This is uh, very sinful. You replace the higher self. This is not good because there's only one self. Is the only one self which appears as the many selves. So if speak and act with an impure mind and trouble will follow you as it will follows the ox that draws the cart. All miseries are born from the mind. All miseries are born from the mind. All karmas, which leads to miseries, which leads to rebirth, to reincarnation, is born from the mind. You know? All sadness, all judgment, all lust, which leads to suffering, to misery, they are born from the mind. So that's why a mystic will say, if you want, to stop suffering, you will have to transcend mind. You will have to attain to pure mind. In Hindi, we have beautiful words here. It's a term, we call it Bhav Sagar. Bhav Sagar means the, the situation of being born again and again, being caught in illusion of being a fragmented consciousness or being cut off from life of identification with the body and being born again and again as a body. They have called it Bhav Sagar. Sagar means an ocean. It's just like an ocean that you have to cross. So you speak or act with an impure mind and trouble will follow you as the will follows the ox that draws the cart. No, the ox draws the cart, so the will has to follow. You don't have to do anything, just be a mind. Anything happens automatically. Similarly for virtue, just as greed, anger, less, all these impurities of the shadow of the mind, of unconsciousness, of a fragmented mind, of the ego, similarly virtue, virtues are a byproduct of a meditative mind, of a conscious mind, of a mind which is awakened. So that's why truly religious people don't have to practice virtues. They don't give and take love. Love happens. Love is spread its fragrance automatically as they become more and more aware. So you don't have to love. You know, you become loving as you become more meditative. That's why a person who is spiritual, truly spiritual, a person who is a meditator, do not expect love from anybody. When you expect something from anybody, which it means that there is an absence of that particular thing. That's why 
truly religious person, they do not expect love. They do not ask for respect. People say, you need to show some respect to me. <laughs> and when people, people suffer because they don't have respect, people suffer because people do not love them. You know, people suffer because other people in society do not uh, know or understand or show the worth. But when you're silent, when you are an angel, when you realize that you are godliness itself, what to ask? You are already an emperor. An emperor would go and beg. No emperor would go and beg because he has everything. So you get my point. Mm -hmm. So be an emperor, be meditative. Mm -hmm. Then no need for attachment, no need for desire, no need for ambition. Mm -hmm. Your life as it is now, because uh, your mind has not yet become pure. So you go on looking for things. You go on, uh, for example, uh, if a woman gets, a girl gets married, she feels incomplete until she becomes a mother, you know? So she has to become a mother. People say it's natural. To, yes, it is absolutely natural. <laughs> There's nothing more natural than this. But this is, uh, this is a you. This is Maya. Because you're more than a mother. You're a consciousness. You're a true consciousness. Mm -hmm. Go beyond your gender. Okay, shall we continue? Okay. So uh, Buddha said, look how he abused me and beat me. How he threw me down and robbed me. Live with such thoughts and you live in hate. Now this is about grudge. This is about grudge. So long as you have an ego, so long as you have a mind, you will have grudge. You know? And this is uh, a disease that, uh, it is a disease of the human mind. It, it, it is a disease of people in society. When people uh, tell you things, when people, when people tell you off, when people correct your mistake, when people speak forcefully to you about certain realities of life, even if people do not speak, when you see people leading a righteous life, a truthful life, you develop grudge. What did Jesus Christ do? What did Jesus Christ do? so that he was nailed to the cross because he was so good. <laughs> Would you believe that? He was so divine. He was so loving. He was so great. He was so peaceful. But the problem, he, he asserted all these through his being. His whole being was emanating love, compassion, forgiveness. People think that Jesus Christ healed. He did not heal. Healing happened for him. Because when you heal, when you say you are healing, it is the ego which is there, just like in Reiki, channeling all these stupid things. People think they are the doer. Jesus Christ was not a doer. It was happening through him. So that's why he says, I don't do all the things by myself, but by the Father who is in me. And he could have said myself because he was himself forward. Whoever becomes an item becomes the father and becomes the mother. The mother. Is this what I understood? You see? So we are speaking about grudge. So you have to be very careful about this. It will happen when your ego is uh, shaken. When people tell you certain realities. When people tell you about the truth. Hmm? Criticize you. Abuse you. Slender you and all those things. So you develop grudge. I give you something uh, very uh, current, people which is used in, in daily life. Somebody shout at you, tell you something, it's just your ego gets a shock. 
And what happens is ego means mind. The ego registers it, records it. Now, next time you come across that person, automatically there's a sort of reaction, a sort of dis-ease, discomfort. And more so, if that particular individual tell you something, even softly, even with love, there will be a sort of resistance. This I have observed. And this is a psychological fact. And like this, so many people have told you so many things. When people pick up a, up a new, you know, especially an old list, in a meeting or in a group or somewhere, even at home. So you have a ten, and it's natural. The mind has a tendency to record all the things. And then what happened? Next moment, next time, it may not be with the same person, but then you flare up, you react. So this is what is being said here. Look how he abused me and beat me. He threw me down and dropped me. So you have a tendency to keep things. There was a great mistake called Shirdi Sai Baba. Not the modern one with big hair like Afro, no, this one. Shirdi Sai Baba. He's, he was called Sai Baba also. He used to live in uh, a town near Mumbai called Shirdi. He said, let people abuse you. Let people slander you. The abuse and the slander will make no hole in your soul. It is the ego that is affected. And if you get identified as an ego, which you do, most people lose, do, sorry. Then of course, you will feel that as if your his skin is being peeled off from you. When the ego gets hurt, we all have experienced it. It's as if somebody is peeling your skin, you know, is ripping you off. <laughs> and it hurts a lot. And it hurts a lot. This we know. So don't feel bad. Just understand. Understand what, I, what I'm telling you. This happens. Grudge. People have a tendency to keep things. You don't forget, this is okay. You don't forget things it's because we have a mind, we have a memory. But when you keep it with an attitude, you know, at the back of your mind, next time I get an opportunity, you'll know. <laughs> I'll see. So meditate on this, make it become a deep meditation because these are the, our basic things. Buddha was a great teacher, he was a great guru. Many people attain enlightenment, but few uh, have the ability, have the talent to become a master in the caliber of Buddha. Buddha was a master of the very high caliber, perhaps the highest caliber. Look how he abused me and beat me, and how he threw me down and robbed me, abandon such thoughts and live in love. <laughs> People have a tendency to carry the past. We have a tendency to carry the past. And we have the tendency not to forgive. Now note, when you see masters using certain statements, for example, when you said, forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. When, for example, you know, many masters say, forget, Buddha says, forgive and all you should know that there is a very big reason. There is a very uh, important reason behind such statements. Because if you can't forgive, you are carrying hatred with it. And hatred is like a poison. It is a poison. Mm -hmm. So throw away such poisons, you know, throw away such poisons. So beware of hatred, even to animals, to people. Now, these days, uh, we are passing through the pandemic. People are talking about fighting the virus, you know, fighting corona. Now, poor guy, 
he's always struggling to survive, <laughs> you know, because he exists in the same universe, in the same existence as us. He also has, as creator, the same law that created us. So what wrong is he doing? He's trying to survive. And to survive, he needs body. So why? develop animosity towards him, him or her, towards it if you wish. Now people say you have to you have to combat, you have to fight, you have to together fight this first. You don't have to fight. You have to understand its ways and see how to avoid it. Now we have an aura which has three feet in dimension all around our body. Means one meter. Most of the time you're supposed to keep yourself alert, alone and relax. You have to, you need to have your own space, but you are always lost in the crowd. People are always lost in the crowd. They always want to, to, to be surrounded by people. They can't stay alone because they are afraid. Afraid of so many things. Afraid of loneliness. Afraid of silence. So the Lord says, okay, let me send something that will help you. In his compassion, he sells Mr. or Mrs. Corona. <laughs> you know? that you realize that you have to keep distance. People are too, too close together, you know, too compact, life is too compact, too many people around. So nature said, it's okay, it's time for the cleansing. Okay guys, take all our uh, equipment, let's go and, and have a good cleansing on planet Earth. <laughs> so this is what's happening. So that's why I take it funny. I take it as a play, you know. This forms part of life. And just to see the opportunity to pass on the message because the video will go up there. This is a time to question about life, about birth, about death, about relationship. You know, about relationship. About the impermanency of life. Death happens to anyone at any time. Whether you are young, old, rich, poor, and so on. But it is strange, you know, people continue in their old ways, with their old habits. Just look around, I think the same everywhere. People are so caught in this uh, so-called end of year celebration, the festive season, as we call it, everywhere. They're just drowned in it, you know, the same sensuality, the same stress, the same tension, the same uh, halabalu here and there, you know. So that's it, that's how it is. People do not learn their lesson. Human beings do not learn their lessons. That's why uh, we are struck again and again with things like tsunami, war, this and that, and other trouble, just to wake us up. But unfortunately, we are so, our sleep, I should call slumber, is very great, you see. So abandon such thoughts and live in love. It's so easy. Buddha doesn't give bigger discipline. He doesn't say, you know, you have to love your neighbors. Or say, no, no, he doesn't say all things. He don't say that. Very simple things. He says, just simply abandon such thoughts and live in love. Abandon the thoughts of revenge. You don't think about the past. The past is the past. And the past, the Hindus have called it Bhut. Bhut means ghost. It is past. It is no more. It is a ghost. There are so many ghosts within, so, so many pasts, so many thoughts about the past within. Just forget it, live in the present moment and live in love and be happy. Don't think about, don't think about hurting your neighbor, your friends. Mm -hmm. Who robbed you? Who hates you? Who showed disrespect to you? Just forget and keep going. You have to move forward. You know, impressions of the mind, thinking of the past, they uh, impair your march. They become harder on the way. So that's why spiritual people live in the present moment. 
live in the present moment and focus towards your goal. I mean, this is a way of saying things. I'm not saying to start uh, hoping and expecting for the future and living in the future. This is a way of saying things. The future is potentially in you. The, your future is enlightenment. Your future is samadhi. So he said, look how he abused me and beat me, how he threw me down and robbed me, abandon such faults and live in love. Abandon all faults, I would say. Not only these faults, abandon greed, which is a thought about the lust, which is a thought, which is thinking about them. hatred, jealousy, all things, and then live in love. To live in love, you have to abandon all the things. You have to abandon an impure mind. You have to abandon mind, because mind cannot love. Mind is politics. Mind is mathematics. Mind is logic. Mind divides. You know, mind is past. Mind is future. Mind is unconsciousness. If you are living in mind, then you cannot say that you are living in love. You cannot say that you are living in bliss. You cannot say that you are meditating. You cannot say that you are living in godliness. You cannot say that you are spiritual. Hmm? But this, that's it. Now, if a few questions, just few questions. Please expose them to me. And I will try to respond. I said try because, you know, my state, my uh, being, I have to seek for words and statements. I have to compare. I have to look for parables. My goodness, this is so difficult for me. <laughs> uh, you see? This is extremely difficult. But uh, we just ask your questions. By the grace of Divine Mother, I will respond. What is happening, Lina? Is you top sit upside down, <laughs> lopsided. What is happening? You played with the button. Yes. Praveen, how are you, my dear? Good. I'm good, uh -huh. I'm good. Ash, how are you? Vishna, how are you? How is Yaro? I'm good, how is there. everybody? Thank you. Good. Very good. Very good. Celebrate. Now, my teaching is you enjoy life. And at the same time, of course, you focus more on your meditation. I'm not saying that you shouldn't celebrate Christmas. I said you celebrate Christ, but I'm not saying that you don't take a good uh, glass of wine or a good grilled turkey, whatever it is. No, no. My approach to life, you have to celebrate. Celebrate this life, another one. Life is meant for celebration, but of course. Be fully alert, keep middle path, be in the present moment. Don't get carried away by the eye or the ego. Otherwise, please enjoy life. Meet people, celebrate, dance, play music, walk around, swim, travel. I would like my disciple to be living like this. In French, we have we call it a bon vivant. I don't know the exact translation in English. If you know, you can send them to me. Bon vivant, people who live life, you know. You see, in French, we call it croque la vie à plein dedans. You know, live life really fully, enjoy life just as I do. But of course, as you will uh, uh, grow deep into meditation, you will be more silent, more aware. You will be enjoying more your silence and your bliss more than anything else. You know? For example, uh, I, I used to like beautiful cows, you know, luxurious cows. And this was my, not, not really a chain, not really uh, something that uh, binds me. But th that was my human side previously, you know, after my enlightenment, even uh, many years. But then now, it's okay. You know, as you become older, I mean, not really older in the literal sense, become more mature in one sense, you know. So now it's okay. If it is here, it is here. If it won't say it's not here. So that's it. So I've heard that uh, cor Corona is striking very badly over there. Yesterday, uh, Gumara was speaking to his brother, uh, Arti's uncle, and uh, this is what she told us. 
but the situation is very serious over there. So you people, my people, my disciples, don't be afraid, just be more relaxed, more aware, take all the precautions. Go to park, in park you can keep distance and uh, I, as, as uh, of now it is very cold over there. So stay in though, relax, meditate, read, sleep, and that's it. So if you have no questions, then we part and see you. We'll let you know uh, for the next meeting. And as we are reaching the end of this year, you know, for me, there is no end of year, beginning of your bedtime, speaking your language. Have nice days ahead. Enjoy, meditate, read. Relax. Mm. And uh, my love and blessing is always with you. Mm. Don't forget, potentially, you are already enlightened, but you are delaying in claiming your enlightenment. That is your responsibility. I can't interfere in that. I mean, I can help you. I try to remind you. That is my realization, and that is the realization of the masters. You are born enlightened. Essentially, you are the divine. You are me, I am you, we are one. You are one with this universe. You know? So have the courage to renounce this ego. Hmm? Give yourself totally, body, mind, heart, and soul. The more you renounce ugly things, the more you will be in meditation, and soon you will attain samadhi. If I look at in the future, if you look, if I look at the future, it is already attained, just like death is something already there. So similarly, you are not, and if you delay, that's your problem. <laughs> no? Yes, if I just want friend. to say, Guru. Oh, sorry. please go ahead. Yes, no, go I ahead. just want to say, Guruji, that there is a less resistance now. Good. I'm talking not from the mind, uh, in internal resistance, uh, which used to be in a different quantity. It's, uh, it's different now. It's Good. less, it's less, and uh, it feels different within, you know, how you live life and uh, how you co communicate with people, even with my sister. It's so different now. Good, good. What I expect uh, is that you have more uh, your relationship among yourself improves. You become more loving and more close. You meet more often and be uh, more loving to each other, forgive each other. That will give you more energy, more intelligence to do my work. And also, as we say, united we stand, divided we fall. The more you are united, you know, it's, I would expect that you be there for your brothers and sisters and friends in difficult moments. You know, don't close yourself because you seem to be a bit, close, a bit closer there, a bit personal, each one of you. This is not the spiritual. Though you have to uh, be grounded in your individuality, in your uh, in yourself, but yet you have to open yourself. Don't be like the centrifugal force. Be like a flower. Be the centripetal force. Open your heart. Open your mind. Okay? That's it. Hurry on.